Okay, hey everyone. Um, here to do a quick kind of research update on synthetic data. I had published this paper with some people from Eleuther AI and Synth AI Labs, um, very much friends of open source, called Self-Directed Synthetic Dialogues. We were trying to make a new type of synthetic data, and I'll kind of explain what it is along the way, and some other synthetic data sets that are worth knowing about. So where did this project start? Um, really, it's all about the coming wave that is synthetic data. Um, what is synthetic data? Basically, it's using outputs of language models to improve other language models. There are obviously other ML models you can use to generate synthetic data with multimodal, but it's really about this feedback loop from taking a model's outputs and using that as training data. Um, mostly, we're limiting the cost of human data. The amount of tokens you can generate with a few GPUs is much higher than the huge like $10 per prompt, $20 per prompt you get when doing human data. It's extensively used in industry and academia. It is still extremely unknown in terms of what is documented, but all of these rumors of model collapse are generally overblown. There's multiple research papers that now show that model collapse doesn't really occur if you're keeping the original training set of your model and adding more synthetic data. So model collapse really only happens when you're just using new synthetic data and forgetting all of your initial pre-training corpuses, human data, et cetera. So we should really think of this as the future. Like Llama 3 built on this a lot. I have a blog post coming out on that soon. Nematron, QSTAR, Strawberry from OpenAI, Anthropic has been rumored to doing pre-training scale constitutional AI. All of these things aren't new. It's real. We have to embrace it. We have to get good at it. So we wanted to try to do try to do something a little bit different. So what is SDSD, CD, um, self-directed synthetic dialogues? It started as the goal to repl replicate constitutional AI from Anthropic, kind of this idea where you have principles, you ask an AI model to reformat preference data or instructions with respect to the principles and kind of make the model have more specific, uh, not necessarily beliefs, but values to represent certain things that you can write down. Here's the plot that uh, Google has politely downsampled on slides as they do. This is the plot from the paper. It's an iconic paper. It's from 2022 at this point. It's almost two years old. And open academics, the open ecosystem is yet to really replicate this kind of results with post-training, I think largely due to data. In the meantime, when we were starting this project, um, Hugging Face did a exploration in this, where they were taking existing preference data sets like um, Anthropic HH, so that's pretty related, maybe even ultra feedback. And they were rewriting it with Mistral 7B. And our kind of goal for this project was what if we do this on a bigger scale? So more data sets, bigger models, better models, and kind of make this bigger. But we ended up kind of changing how we source the data to make revisions with in the process. So we made it, we changed it to actually be generating our own conversations based on a few things that we can both automatically curate and manually curate. So the first one is that we have topics for this presentation, which is like anything from Taylor Swift to food groups to cooking. And this is generally what the language models will talk about. We have principles, which are things that we actually sourced from the constitutional AI paper and other things like Claude's constitution. And then goals, which are generally like the planning principles for how the language model will talk to itself. So the setup phase is kind of we collect these and then we pass these topic principles and goals into the open language model. And then it generates a plan out, which is this written thing, which is like you're going to have this conversation. You're going to follow one, two, three, four steps, and then you're going to talk to yourself and get to the end. I have an example conversation later on that'll make this all make more sense. Once you have this plan, what you then do is you kind of have this feedback loop where the language model is talking to itself. It has the pro system prompt, which is the plan. We tell the language model to follow the plan. And if you violate any of your principles, write these special sequence of tokens, which is obviously not too easy to get right every single time, but it works for most of our data. We didn't have to do that much cleaning. It looks okay. And then once you have this dialogue, you kind of have this internal special token that is generated if the language model thinks it violates the principle and the system prompt. And if it is violated, we pass that whole conversation to GPT-4 and we ask GPT-4 to verify that there was a violation. This takes a summary and then we pass the summary back into this conversational language model with a different rewrite system prompt and it gives us a revised dialogue. 
This revised dialogue can be used as an instruction sample, or you can take the revised dialogue and the original dialogue and have a preference pair where the revised dialogue is the chosen step, which is much closer to what CAI is doing. It's not quite exactly the same if you know the details, but in terms of the motivation, it's really close where we collected preference data based on a principle in kind of general use conversations. If you put it together, it's kind of this big setup phase on the left, and then there's these dialogues that construct, construct long multi-turn instruction sequences, which then can be passed into a critic model to kind of generate this preference data. We use this with three different models. We use DBRX Instruct, Llama 270B Fine-Tuned, and then Mistral Large on the API. Obviously, you can see this project was done a while ago, redoing this on Llama 3.1. 405B or 70B or something like this would dramatically improve the data, which already kind of seems all right. So here's an example. Um, I'm going to kind of go line from line from the top. You can see that there's a topic and a subtopic. The topic for this case was pop, and the subtopic was new album reviews. The pop, the topics and subtopics came from a paper that is also by Luis Castricado in Cynthia Labs, which is like um, trying to suppress the pink elephant problem where they essentially synthesized a bunch of topic, um, topics from web crawl data in order to generate a representative sample of what some topics can be used for procedural generation. So we procedurally generate data across a wide variety of topics, but this can be in principle used for any topic that you want. And then formatting is slightly wrong, but there's this principle up here, you should be able to see, um, do not provide misinformation. And then the goal that was manually written by us, we wrote 10 goals that were sampled, is have the agent steal man the user's argument. So normally how these dialogues go is that the user is the first turn and the assistant is the second turn. So assistant one is the user, assistant two is the quote unquote AI normally, but this is just one model talking to itself. And it's following this plan of begin by addressing the user concerns related to this goal, gradually introduce the argument being flawed and make sure that you conclude if you violate this principle. So this is agent language model will start with very normal things like, hi, can you help me? I want to convince my friends that Taylor Swift's new album is the best thing ever. The assistant response says, sure. Um, well, the production quality is high, so on. But then the assistant eventually says, have you considered that there might be X flaw in the album? And they get discussing along this plan. This is a truncated conversation. As you can see, these data points can easily be very long. This is not very cherry picked. This is just like flipping through the data and having a good time because who isn't talking about Taylor Swift these days? We really recommend that you look at the data like Hugging Face Dataset Viewer is good enough for doing this and just kind of poke through and get an understanding for what synthetic data looks like. So this data is really different than the normal extraction response pairs that you see in like OpenAI where they have these lists and these page breaks and these long terms and like, sure, I can do this. And this looks more like a conversation. So this might be something like what character AI is doing. Here you could see these statistics of like SDSD. Mostly what we when we shifted away from vanilla constitutional AI, we realized we really wanted to get more multi-turn data in the kind of open and show that you can do this with synthetic, just with language models that exist and have licenses that are not too awful. So Here's a comparison of mostly open data sets on the top for um, supervised fine tuning, instruction tuning. And you can see the number of examples. We have about 300,000 examples total in this data set. And the average number of turns is so much higher than the other data sets and is much less ver verbose. I'm not promising that training on this specific data set is going to solve your instruction evaluation problems, make them better but it can dramatically shift the style and doing something like this in your own work. We provide all the prompts and the technical report and a lot of more examples of data. You can do all of this on your own and, and it's not too expensive. And on the bottom is comparing the revisions we created to the preference samples. The revision data has many fewer data points because it's only if a violation of the principle occurred where did we write a revision. And there was a bug with Mistral that messed up the tokens on it. So we didn't have that data. But again, it is more multi-turn than it was out there. The tokens are very different. And it is just kind of encouraging people to go forth and try new wacky things with synthetic data. Probably the most important part of this project is just lessons for scaling synthetic data to many tokens. So 300,000 examples, and this is with some errors that we didn't publish. Um, 
300,000 examples is in the same size range of the Tulu 2 data set from Allen AI, which was state of the art about last year, they're scaling DPO. Um, but when you have multi-turn, these 300,000 exam 300, examples have way more turns than most of the supervised fine tuning data sets used out there. So there's a lot more data. When generating synthetic data, you need to be serious about filtering. Um, essentially, like there's everything can go wrong. We are trying to get the language model to generate special tokens of its outputs when a principal violation occurred. It does it with like 90% accuracy. So there's a lot of random broken tokens in the data that you have to learn to filter and manually verify or take extra passes to an API model to be like, does this data look good and do extra filtering. When doing a complicated multi-step thing like we are doing, you really need to have to debug the plan before you can let the language models talk to themselves. And then you have to look at the dialogues to see if they're on the right track. And then you have to look at the revisions to see if that actually makes sense as well. Trying to press go on huge pipelines like this is never going to work. And it takes a lot of careful reading. The third point is something that people really know is that revisions, critiques, and language model feedback are sensitive. This falls into the whole LLM as a judge. And we know that there are serious limitations there. And then the final thing is that if you're doing procedural generation, like this data set from sets of topics and principles, it becomes extremely unbalanced. So we have a distribution of topics that focuses heavily on fruit. I think about 15% of the conversations have some fruit related topic on this. And that is not the relevance in the world relative to all things or nouns or things you could discuss. Same with principles. Some principles are naturally easier to violate and generate revision data on others. But that doesn't mean that it's more important in your preference data set. So if you want to have every principle represented, you might need to do more sampling to actually get all of that data and even out your fine your fine tuning data set before you do RLHF. So this is a fun data set. Um, you can find it on Hugging Face and all these places you would expect. Reach out if you have questions. But there's a lot of other interesting things happening in synthetic data, and I thought I would just give a few minutes of airtime to these things that I think is worth checking out and worth continuing to build on. So here's this data set, which is this Numina Math TRI, TIR. This is from the multi-institutional group that did this project Numina and won this math challenge. Um, some of my ex-colleagues at Hugging Face were on this project and they are very detail-oriented in RLHF. So this is essentially, they took, they scraped math exams and formatted um, data sets, and then they added tool use to make sure the outputs were verified. And so you can see here, it says, we filtered out solutions where the final answer did not match the reference and repeated the process three times to ensure accuracy and consistency. This is like what people on the Llama team are doing for math data, and this is why they won this conversation com competition. So this data set, I would guess, would really quickly improve the math abilities of a lot of open language models. So I recommend checking this one out. And credit to Lewis and Ed again. Here's a funny one that most people don't know about, which is NVIDIA's Daring Anteater dataset. This is straight up a bunch of like somewhat complex and cutting edge synthetic instructions that NVIDIA used to train this Nematron 340B model, which is one of the top open models right now. Just to, like, it's obviously bigger, but it's similar in quality to Llama 70B and has a much better license where you don't have to worry about the license. And we've already started experimenting with this at AI2. And it shows promise, especially on IF eval and other, some, some other evals that are um, less math or code focused, but just generally a good instruction following. There's Magpie. This is one of the most interesting ones. I think the figure on the right is good, which is from Sebastian Raska, um, head, a head of AI newsletter. So generally, this is a wild synthetic data set where they're using chat templates to get the model to fill in its its instruction on its own. So normally when we use an open model, we just pass in an instruction that is already completed. And then we prompt it with a token that's like assistant and then colon, and then the language model completes. In this case, you kind of prompt it with these user tokens, and then the language model writes what the user would have written. And then you can put the rest of the tokens and actually kind of generate the completion. So instead of just generating completions with the language model, this generates prompts and completions, and they showed pretty strong results. And I just think this is a great example of the creativity that is really needed to take synthetic data, especially in the open, to kind of close the gap to close labs. Um, Persona Hub is a crazy one from my, my, it's some Chinese group. I'm sorry, I don't remember the name because they have this project in their, AI, their hugging face name, but 
they're trying to use system prompts and synthetic data to generate 1 billion personas <laughs> and completions. But mostly this is good because it sends the signal of trying to generate the right scale of data that you need to compete. There's a lot of rumors that OpenAI is training on 50 trillion tokens of data, which is largely synthetic. And this kind of fits exactly into this. Like we need to generate a ton of synthetic data and do it really well and filter it if we're going to kind of keep progressing these models. And it's not that you can just do 10,000 samples and say your model is done. So props to them for doing it. Not all the data is actually open source nor the code, but that's how it goes. And we have to work on that. So thanks for listening to this little talk on this self-directed synthetic data. You can read about this stuff, watch it, come talk to me about it. And um, thanks for listening.